Everybody wants to give Apple such a hard time about their defects. Check out my Galaxy S7 Active. Isn't it beautiful? Eh? A little better? I haven't dropped it. I haven't sat on it. Or nothing. I'm kidding. I beat the hell out of this phone. Hey everybody. Today I'm going to work on a... What am I working on today? Oh. I'm going to work on an iPhone 7 PCB. It was sent here as logic board only. It came here all the way from Germany and it has been sent here because it does not get an image on the screen. Now, I haven't looked at this thing. I have not the foggiest clue what I'm up against, but we're getting ready to find out together. It came nicely wrapped in this here burrito. Now, I will say the package that this was shipped in came completely, utterly mutilated, and I am scared for the health of this PCB, but it doesn't look like the bubble wrapping has been compromised, and um, let's, let's see what we're up against. So, let's unwrap this together, shall we? Got some tape here. I'm just, I'm really scared whenever I get a board from halfway across the world because many times they have been completely mutilated before they make it to me. I'm like the people's last resort, you know, they've already sent it to half a dozen different countries and then it winds up on my bench. So I'm looking through the packaging here. This doesn't look that bad. It actually looks like it still has the stickers on the back. Seriously? Ooh. I, I'm first one to look at this, right? Got a little bit of a fingerprint on the back. Ah, autofocus. Damn you, autofocus. Go away. We do not need you here. Let's have a look at this thing under the microscope. Here is the board under the microscope. I wonder what the history on this one says. I'm pretty sure this one just said no image. I should probably go and look at that. Uh, okay. I don't see any long screw damage. I have been running into iPhone 7s with long screw damage in this hole causing no image and that is something where I have not had to do too much work to fix it. I basically installed a little jumper from here to here and been able to get image. I've got a picture of one that I've done. I'll, I'll clip in a picture right here. Oh hey I'm wrong. I actually have a short video clip of this. So what I determined is that this one did not have 1.8 volts making it over to the connector and it was caused by long screw damage and I've done a couple of them this way. Um, afterwards, I put green UV mask on it and made it look nice and pretty. Now, back to our repair. Okay, not any immediate troubles that I can see here. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of the PCB. Check the top over. I see that that screw has been reinstalled. Uh, probably by somebody who wants to be sure they don't screw it up. Wow, I totally misread this situation. I'm serious. Many times whenever these things come from outside of the country, it is just an absolute, total, freaking nightmare. We are going to have a look at EasyDraw here, and I'm going to open up an iPhone 7. This board is an 820-00189-A. So we're going to open up the 820-189-A. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in. Oh, you know what? We don't have crap for information on this. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the other version of this board. Uh, because the display connector will be the same. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in on the display connectors so that we can see what the line names are here. And for image, I know that we are going to need 1.8 volts. Okay, Without 1.8 volts coming out to the connector, the display has nothing to send back to Chestnut to tell this thing to turn on. So down at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you have a microscope image of what it is that I'm looking at. And I'm going to zoom in on these first groups of pins here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check diode mode measurement to ground on the fourth pin because that is our first pin that we will need for image. I'm going to put my red probe on ground and I'm going to use my black probe to check at the pin. This is the fourth pin over. Uh, this pin has given me 2.4 so what that tells me and let's go ahead and do a resistance mode measurement. This pin is reading 0L. Now, that is also the same reading that I would get on a long screw damage board that's had the 1.8 volt traits cut, uh, but this one does not have any visible signs of damage. Why am I all hunched over? That's why I got this chair for. 
Okay, this one does not have any visible signs of damage. It's most likely going to be the filter. So if we switch back over here to Easy Draw and we look at where this goes to, uh, PP1V8 LCM Con, on the other side of the board, there's a filter that this hooks to right here FL3906. It's basically a backlight filter. And I'm suspecting once we cut the sticker off of this board, it is going to be. Uh, uh, it, it, it's 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 gonna look less than perfect. So um, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the bottom sticker. Now I haven't actually hooked this thing up to verify the problem. That's because most people, I don't know, whenever they come like this, they're they're pristine. I, I just I kind of believe this guy. If he shipped me an iPhone 7 from Germany and says it don't get an image, it's probably not getting an image. And especially now that I see that the 1.8 volt line is open, it's almost for sure not getting an image. I mean, it's for sure not getting an image. Uh, so let's go ahead, we're going to take the bottom sticker off. And I take these stickers off really carefully because I like to put them back, right back on where they go. Okay. So we've just, uh, you can't see what I've done. Oh, oh come on. Seriously? Alright, so I just used the tip of my blade here to raise that sticker up some. And then we're going to gra grab it with my tweezers. And we're going to strip it back, 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 and that filter does in fact look burnt. You know, I think I've got another, my only other iPhone 7 video that I've got up is also the same exact filter. Uh, so if we look down in here between these two thingies, we've got a blown filter. Okay, and let's see, I'm going to grab basically backlight filters okay uh, so what we're gonna do here I'm actually going to let's see I a lot of times on this stuff I do not use hot air anymore however I'm not confident that I can get my tweezers in beside this thing and this IC here and I don't know what if what if I flip it around I've not actually had to do many of these on the iPhone 7 because they don't commonly go that bad uh, they don't go bad that commonly um, well, let me see if I can get a hold of that with, with my tweezers. Let's, let's just give that a shot. So I'm going to turn my hot air on because I can't hardly think or breathe or do anything without my hot air running. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of flux to this. Gosh, that was way too much flux. Oh my gosh. Lewis Rossman would be proud. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of leaded solder on the tip of my tweezers. Let's see if I can get these big fat tips down in here. If I can't, I'm just going to use hot air. Ooh, that's a lot of solder. Ugh. Okay, and we're gonna reach down. You know what? I am so I'm so on autopilot, guys. I, I I need to apologize. I did not confirm that this filter was bad. I just you know I'm just I'm under assumption mode here. I've worked on so many phones. It's like, hey, that's fucking bad. Let's change it. So I'm gonna put. I'm gonna check this in resistance mode. I'm gonna put one probe on this side of it. Put my other probe on the other side of it. And I'm getting 27,000 ohms, and that might be because I'm touching the touching something else here. It's definitely bad. Across these filters, you should get maybe an ohm. Um, you should get a very low resistance. So let's go ahead and remove the backlight, not backlight, the uh, 1.8 volt filter for image. And I don't think I can get my tweezers down in there. Yeah, I'm just gonna ding up the ICs around it. Yeah, let's 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 not do anything. Let's not do anything too crazy, right? All right. So what I'm gonna do here? Some crap on my tweezers. Oh, I'm trying to record a video. Get off my. Okay, barely, just just enough hot crap. Just enough hot air to pop that off of there. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the spot that this thing just came out of. We're going to make sure it does have 
flux in it. I'm going to get leaded solder on the tip of my micro pencil. And I'm going to get down in here and I'm going to tin these pads with leaded. Okay. I don't like the grungy look on the bottom one. Come on. Did you hear my station screech just now? It's because I've got a failing tip on that pencil. It's a brand new tip. Thank you. No, motherfucker, you need to get through another day. There we go. It's, it's just beautiful. It's so, it's so beautiful. All right, now we're going to take, we're going to dump out a new inductor here. Wait, is it the wrong size? Did I dump, is this the, surely it's not the wrong size. I wouldn't do that. Not me. Not in front of everybody. Okay, so we're going to sit that right in there like that. Okay, I'm right at the point where my leaded is going to melt. Let's zoom in so you can see this really good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to temp. And I might have to give it a little bit of nudge to break surface tension on the top side here. But it should just drop right into place. There we go. So now we have replaced um, the little inductor fuse thingy that gives 1.8 volts to the, uh, the LCM. Okay, so now I'm going to use just a little bit of alcohol and see if I can clean this up some. I used more... I used more uh, alcohol flux here than I would care to use, but well, what are you going to do? And there really isn't any getting the flux out from under these ICs. You can you can ultrasonic clean them, and that'll get the flux out from under the edges. I am the mother who all who has ever nitpicked. I see some of the stuff other people send out the door and some of the other stuff that comes here, and I just I couldn't hardly do it. Like, yeah, maybe on a, on a day when I'm really, really, really in a hurry, and I know it's just not going to cause any problems. All right, warm it up good. A little too hot there. Okay. For the most part, I am just immensely picky and like to send things out the door really, really, really clean. But, I mean, in all fairness, Apple doesn't send everything out the door clean. They leave flux all over the place, and... For the most part, it's not it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so here is the component we replaced. That is FL3906 and FL3906 basically what it does is it has 1.8 volts that comes in on this side from PP1V8. That's the line that we're on. Move this up so you can read the bottom of it. So on this side of that filter, you have PP1V8 and on the other side of that filter, we have PP1V8 LCM con, and basically uh, the con side of it goes out to the connector, and um, there you have it. This thing is most likely going to get image. I'm confident enough that it's going to get image that I will go ahead and put the sticker back on the bottom of it. I like to flatten these stickers out pretty flat so that there's no chance of them raising up even though sometimes they still raise up. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my hot air station and I'm going to heat this board back up hot. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. And then, I place the sticker. Delicately, de delicately back in place. I'm trying to convince all of you that I'm not burning my fingers while I'm doing this. Okay. And push it back on. And then I move it over to the side off of this mat. 
because the mat has this, this property where it will swell up and, and it shrinks and, and it contracts and swells and it causes issues reballing chips that have black coating on them. It'll actually flake pieces of the black top off of them. Okay, let's get this big old board holder out of the way here. Next, I'm going to put this thing into a uh, test housing here. Let's see, where's my iPhone 7? Like this iPhone 7 test housing with screws stuck all over it. Here, I've robbed all but one screw out of the home button bracket now. It's like, as soon as I get a new phone to use as a test housing, it doesn't keep all of its components for very long. I start robbing shit. And, like, I've even pulled the battery. It's, it's stock batteries gone. There's my crappy aftermarket battery. It's like, well, gotta have parts to get the job done sometimes, guys. Alright, so let's weasel this into the housing um, you know what for now let's just go ahead I'll go ahead and connect the dock flex to help hold the board in and I'm gonna connect the home button and I'm gonna connect the display there we go I'm gonna put the power supply on the screen and I'm going to connect our black lead here for the iPhone 7. And hopefully we don't have any other problems, okay? So now I've switched the power supply on. We're drawing 0 amps at 4.1 volts. I'm going to push the power button. Let's see. I'm going to push the power button. I didn't hold it down long enough. Don't laugh yet now. This thing verified to have an open... 1.8 volt line, which means that is most likely why it was sent here for no image. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and let this thing boot up, put the camera on me so that you can't see. You can't see very well. There we go. Is it Friday yet? It's been a long week. Is it like, I think it's like Wednesday. It's been a really long week for a Wednesday. Apple logo, and we are at the hello screen. Press home to open. There we go, and in just a minute, Apple is going to say, we have a problem with the home button, hello. You have a problem with the home button, and then it gives you this handy little soft button here, which, that's pretty cool that they would at least do that for you. Okay, we'll pick English. You know what, I'm not gonna go through all this right now because this really is just a straightforward no image repair. Now, this was actually caused during a screen replacement. This is going to be something that was shorted out at the connector by not having it plugged in just right. Uh, those little filters, they don't... They, what happened to my light? Oh, everything is... Everything's really dim. Well, I'm going to finish the video anyways. So, um, those little filters, they don't just blow for no reason. This is most likely, and like I'm 99% sure, this is a short cause during a screen replacement. So... Guys, that is going to be it for this video. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good day.